The next album to be released was the White Album. The double set, The Beatles. The simplicity of the White Beatles album visually is rectified with heavy engineering and audio secrets. The inserts let you draw plenty of conclusions. Although Paul appears to be taking an unassuming bath, his head is floating in shampoo. Now at first glance, that's all it may seem to be. Look again. This may well indicate a brain splatter. On the collage inside, uh, on the back of which are the lyrics, people are saying that passport photo is not Paul, but the guy who has replaced him, and that uh, was a picture of a William Campbell, who was the winner of the lookalike contest. A key song in the whole Paul is Dead mystery is Glass Onion. Which deals in large part with the thematic material of earlier Beatles songs. John Lennon sings about, I told you about strawberry fields. Well, here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. I told you about the walrus and me, man. You know that we're as close as can be, man. Well, here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. Here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. There's a song titled, I'm So Tired. And at the end of the track, as the music ends, someone speaks a gibberish phrase. Now the clue is supposed to come out when you take the gibberish phrase and play it backward. What the voice is saying is, Paul is dead now. Miss him, miss him, miss him. Every time I hear that, I still get chills up my back because that was one clue that just, well, literally it frightened us because it is such a bizarre clue that is part of this whole investigation. What confused me, though, was the fact that when the record is played forward, despite the fact that that phrase is gibberish, it is definitely a man speaking, and not some kind of a tape trick. How come, then, when you reverse the tape, a semi-intelligible phrase emerges. So, here's my original contribution to the Paul McCartney controversy, an experiment. Very carefully, into a tape recorder, I spoke this phrase. Paul is dead now. Miss him. Miss him. Miss him. Then, I took that tape and turned it backward, so that it sounded like this. Miss him. Miss him. Miss him. One dead zero. Then, I rigged up another tape recorder and microphone, and a set of earphones. And then, playing the tape of myself backward, I tried to mimic that sound, so that I was actually speaking the backward phrase. Miss him, miss him, miss him, miss him. Wow, Then, after I'd practiced a few times, I tried saying the phrase backward without listening to the original tape. Miss him, miss him, miss him, miss him. Please excuse the embarrassed tone in my voice there, wouldn't you be? Anyway, I finally took that tape of me speaking the forward phrase backward and turned it backward. And this is what happened. Oh, he's dead now. Miss him, miss him, miss him. Which is very close, of course, to... Now, does that prove anything to you? It did to me, and I got terribly excited about it at the time, but I can't really remember what it was. More interesting aspects of the White Album is a short little song that appears on the record right before Revolution Number 9. It does not appear in the list of song titles, nor do its lyrics appear on the lyric sheet. Can you take me back where I came from? Can you take me back? These allegorical lines lead into the selection which convinces many people the Paul is Dead rumor to be something thought of more than just a series of coincidences. The track is Revolution Number 9. Number it nine. isn't always necessary to hear nine. lyrics of the Beatles' Number music nine. in a forward motion. Nine. Number, nine. Number nine Number was the nine. first big clue. Number nine. Only difference is you split channels and you play things backwards. And you get this.
Tens of thousands of people will tell you, quite seriously, that the phrase is, turn me on, dead man, spoken over and again. Turn me on, dead man. Turn me on, dead man. Turn me on, dead man. I want to point out to you something. If you were to say number nine, number nine, number nine, and reverse the tape, you would not get turn me on, dead man. Nounderman, Nounderman, Nounderman. It's the way they stress the words. Number nine, number nine, number nine, which gives you the illusion of turn me on, dead man. Nounderman, Nounderman, Nounderman. This is a long collage of sounds, of snatches of conversation, of fragments of music. And the tapes are all mixed as a montage, apparently in a random pattern, and on first hearing, unintelligible. The total feeling of the work comes close to that of musique concrète. So here was a, a recording which was always going to have a very rich bounty for anybody looking for supposed clues. Not only if you played it forwards, but especially if you played it backwards. And someone finally discovered that if you play the right channel of the stereo alone, all kinds of things happen that are masked in the two-channel version. First, you can hear a voice talking about hitting a light pole and getting to a surgeon. From there, Revolution 9 drifts into a full stream of consciousness Freudo Joycean montage, and it is very, very easy to hear in it the kind of splintered and pain racked thought flashes that might be going on in the brain of a musician who has been badly hurt in an automobile accident. My wings are broken, and there are flames. Continuing frontwards on the cut, many strange sounds can be heard, including car horns, a car crash, and fire burning. Must have got it in the shoulder blades. There is absolution, sacraments, final rites. Take this, brother. May it serve you well. There are the voices of women. There is music and a remembered football game. Hold that line. Live. Live. But then there is the final fade out, and there is death. When this song is played totally in reverse, more interesting phrases can be heard besides the famous Turn Me On, Dead Man. While the crashes, screams, and fire can still be heard, after about one minute and ten seconds, a faint Let Me Out can be heard, apparently from someone burning in a car. At two minutes and thirty seconds, the fire sounds are very clear, and we hear the phrase, There were two. There are none now. Paul and Rita. At five minutes and thirty-five seconds, we hear someone screaming, let me out. Let me out. Assuming for a moment that there was a car accident, someone screaming, get me out, would be a very logical piece to listen to. The next piece is bizarre, and this is where we start to electronically change things a little bit. This is right off of number nine, and there's a, a baby crying, and someone saying over it, who's to know? This is at normal speed. Ah. Who's to know? Who's to know? Now that is again what it sounds like at normal speed. What we did is we slowed down the who's to know to I'd say approximately half the normal speed. And if you accept the hypothesis that there was a car accident, tell me if this doesn't sound like a man groaning to get out of it. Uh. 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 